needed one pair of glasses. Yeah, the, the presentations seem to get smaller and smaller in type size. Um, new friends, uh, old friends, dear friends, um, and, and the organizers, thank you so much for, uh, for having me talk. I'm always honored to, to be here and, and speak about XML and XML stuff. Uh, my name is Jim Fuller. I work for Mark Logic Engineering. Um, I'm not an expert, and uh, if you're lucky to have problems uh, that you choose, uh, 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 th that's good, but this problem I'm, I'm going to show you is a problem that chose me. Um, so when this happens, you basically have to arm yourself with as much knowledge to try and solve a problem that you are certainly not an expert about. Um, whilst I'm trying to solve problems that I choose or other people choose for me or I, I bump into, uh, I enjoy functional programming. The talk overview is uh, we're going to talk about some of my meanderings in, in doing differencing between XML documents using XQuery. Uh, this talk is about XML, and it's about XQuery, but it's more about the, the problem um, that I was trying to solve and, and the, the path I had to take to, to solve this problem. Um, for lack of time, uh, I'm not going to be able to dive into the lemmas of the heuristics of, of everything. Um, and there's also some stuff that I can't show because it's, it's part of work, but I'll be releasing a GitHub repo and that's all for you to pour over and look over and tell me where I may have gotten things wrong. Uh, the problem. Um, right, so we've talked about we, we want to do differencing on, um, on documents. And, there's a lot of historical uh, uh, work on, on differencing in, in general, and I'm just going to flip between uh, things if I can. And I'm going to use uh, oxygen to, um, to aid uh, sort of the, well, this is the problem with using these glasses here. It's okay. All right. How's that going to work? Um, all right. I think I'm choosing the right things. Uh, right. So. This is just normal differencing of, of non-XML documents, just the text. And uh, all this is showing is on the left-hand side, we've, we've got text, and, and in the other document, we don't have text. Um, there's about a million billion papers on, on text uh, uh, diffing, and in, 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 in the same vein, we've been working very hard in the XML world where we have a million billion papers about um, differencing trees. Uh, and you know you can you can do fun stuff like uh, I don't know you can probably uh, we'll go to command line you can probably uh, yeah I could do that I'll I'll try to difference a an XML doc document using uh, diff and I don't know if you can see that but yeah it kind of works so anyways that's a, that's not what we're trying to do obviously what we're trying to do is something uh, a little bit more nuanced. Uh, with XQuery, we have stuff built into it. Um, we have, uh, can you see that? Probably not. Uh, we'll probably go to Oxygen again. Uh, that's probably bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Um, so you can use FN deep equal to match two trees, but that doesn't give you a lot of, a lot of information. That's just telling you if it's true or not. Um, you don't know when it's false how it's, how it's not true. Um, and, uh, and when things are, are, are incorrect or untrue, um, they may be surprising. For example, if we look at the second version of the, of, on doc number two, what we've done is we've transposed the elements, right? So when we run this, we get false. So all we've done, um, I probably have an example of it somewhere. Uh, not that one, probably A2, yeah, okay, so we'll just take these two. So all we've done is we have A1 and A2, um, and A1 has basically the equivalent of, of transposing elements. And when we do that, that's when um, we have problems with, uh, with differencing tools as we know it today. So if we do this within, um, uh, you know, Oxygen has a great differencing engine. 
And, and there's nothing wrong. Uh, you know, these are equivalent in another world. It, XML is an ordered tree. Um, so obviously they're not equivalent here, but what I mean is that they are equivalent. And this is kind of hinting at the problem uh, that we see. Um, so I'll pre uh, Yeah, there's an age mismatch as well. Thank you, thank you. I can, I can change that, but I'm not going to just yet. Um, right, so if we continue and get uh, a little bit more sophisticated, I'm, I'm trying to go slow to, to faster. Um, there's a way with, with XQuery to, to easily come up with a, a sort of generic diff that, that works for, for the cases I've shown you. Um, you can go through the trees and hash every node and then you can make a, a comparison of hashes and say where, every, where, where all the hashes are equal, we're good, where they're not, then that, that's where the differences is. And, and in the, in the GitHub repo, there'll be a flavor called diff.xqi that does this. So, so for the normal differencing, you can, you can do, um, do what you want. But that's not, not, that's not what's interesting me. Um, well, that's not for, for my purposes. So if we look at, at the uh, documents, uh, we have uh, document one here, and document two, and the, the values of ages uh, are different. Um, so let's make that, let's just make this all the same, I guess, to, so we have, uh, so, we'll, so we'll just, we'll just have um, a difference in, in age and we'll make that 23 and we'll make this 22, that'll make my wife happy. Um, okay, so if we run this, in theory, we, what, what that X query does, and I'm not gonna delve into the details of it, what it does is it, it'll parse both documents and then hash every node and, and then it'll do a node comparison. And then when we do the differencing, all we have to do is pop out the nodes that, that don't compare. So if we look here, we see that the, you know, we're getting ha a hash does it, that doesn't work. That's fine, that's, that's normal XML differencing and that's not why I'm here today. Um, so if we go back to the, to the presentation, sorry if I'm flitting about here. Um, Diffing XML documents, they, they don't easily report uh, where the differences are. They don't delineate between you know, value and ordering. It'd be nice if you could know when there's a difference purely because of things being out of order. They're also not uh, a term Michael Kay was saying, schema aware. You know, it'd be nice for a differencing utility to be aware of an XSL and a schema or to, you know, to be aware of enumerations and, and whatnot. Uh, and process efficiently and, and all that type of stuff. In, in my job, I have, I have this problem that I'm gonna show you uh, quite often, which is you'll get XML that has been sort of generated, regenerated, reparsed, and, and through a million different systems. And then by the time it gets persisted into, into a database, it might be of one ordering. Um, and it might go back out or come back in again, and it might come in another ordering. So a, a good example of this is in Mark Logic, we have uh, range element indexes, um, and uh, people are able to configure Mark Logic, so they can take this this set of properties and generate a, a bit of XML with Python, and, and it might be that their systems uh, transpose the the elements here. You can see the change here. That in a in an ordered tree, that's different, but in this situation, in an unordered tree, we would like to say this is uh, you know, this is a situation where we want to, to treat the, 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 the change as equivalent. A, a sort of higher order impact of unstable ordering or different ordering is that when you have very complicated systems, you know, every one of these systems can be touching the XML, imposing an order. Um, and what that might be doing is, is building up a lot of work. Maybe at the data layer you have to say, Right, let's, uh, let's reparse all this and force it and canonize it into a format. You, you know, with Mark Logic customers, we often have billions of documents and hundreds of servers, and the whole idea of reparsing things is just, you know, not, not a go uh, for a lot of clients. And, you, you know, you're not even thinking about, once you've done all this, you gotta load it back in and re-index it all. It's just, you know, we want to have a load as is model. 
Um, and, and you can imagine that even at the interfaces, there's little blue code touching this stuff. Um, so that's sort of the overview of the problem is that uh, we have, you know, documents that have unstable ordering. Now, it's not just XML. Um, we have, uh, I've already talked about that. Um, you can think about uh, JSON. Michael K. hinted, thank you very much, uh, uh, about the benefits of JSON being a multi-set or an unordered tree. It's that they're fast to update. Uh, but there's cost to every data structure that you may choose. And uh, because they're fast to update, um, they, don't, they, they have no left to right ordering. They, they have only ancestor uh, relationships. And, and in, in computing, uh, the difference between diffing a, an ordered tree versus an unordered tree is a magnitude different, harder problem. Um, you can have uh, a lot more trees to match uh, in an unordered tree, and you have to use a lot more you know, processing power to understand if you've got equivalence or not. Um, there's a lot of academic work out there that, that tries to get to, um, you know, polynomial normal time sort of processing for this stuff, but none, not that many uh, in terms of, uh, of XML. Uh, so an unordered un tree, let's just be clear, um, these would be, if I, if I had a diff utility that looked at these two documents, it would look at this and go, that's fine. These are equal. These are equivalent. Um, so once again, change from that to that. And why is this a problem again? Um, if you have, you know, once again, we have clients with uh, 100 databases with 100 of these things, with 100 of little tiny bits of software, parsing, XML, um, or uh, 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 JSON, and you have one you when you cross over these border these boundaries, these document boundaries, it's very hard to know. You know, uh, well I know when there's JSON involved because it gets scrambled, um, and uh, it, 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 these should be equal in our system. Of course, everyone's saying, why don't you just fix this in code? Of course we can. We can programmatically say when age is in that position, do that. I'm talking about if this was uh, converted to XML. Um, of, of course we can fix everything in code, but I want a generic approach to this so I don't have to, uh, you know, have to maintain every time there's a change in the interface or a change in the code. Is this clear? Uh, maybe um, a, another analogy for people, some, for some of our attendees. <laughs> Uh, as you can tell, uh, what we're talking about is isomorphism. We want to understand if, if two things are isomorphic. Uh, so we've identified the problem. Um, I'm interested in, in differencing, uh, but I'm interested in a, in a particular flavor of differencing. Um, I, and also, along the way, I'd like to, uh, I'd, lo I'd also like differencing, you know, normal, is, are these two things are equivalent, but I, I want, I want to, um, to, to have nice reports. I didn't get to schema aware, but I put it there to embarrass myself to say I didn't get there, but that, that might be something for, for a future talk. Right, so what time are we at here? How much time I got? Uh, ten, minutes. ten minutes, right. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the solution now. The solution's X squared, but I'm not gonna dr drill down into the X query. Yeah. Um, I've identified the problem. It constrained it down to unordered trees. So um, with my crafty uh, 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 Google and search around, I, I found a, a number of papers, and, and one of them was called XDIF. And uh, I would recommend to go and read this paper. Um, you, you'll learn a lot reading papers, and this is a, a good example. Um, it's quite uh, ambitious. Uh, the, the introduction is sort of, you know, it has, has not dated well. It's a bit stale and, and, and remarks in the opening paragraph that XML rules the world and all databases will use XML someday and et cetera, et cetera. But the funny thing is that the math always um, survives the test of time. And uh, they present an algorithm for, you know, in a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of processing to, uh, to uh, have differencing on unordered trees. Right. 
the overview of the algorithm. Um, I've already showed you with the, with the classic diff that step one, um, you're going to parse things and give them hashes. We, need, we still need that. And that's still a cost. I mean, you, you can't hide. There's no, there's no free lunch here. Um, it might be that you distribute that cost in a database where the world I work in, you might ingest hash things and, and distribute the, through time and space uh, that, that work. Um, once we have the hashes, if, it's, uh, if the top level root node hash is equal to each other, we're done. We can go to the pub. They're equal and we can run away. Uh, the next step is the complicated step, and it's not really the step I'm going to show you in great detail because I don't have, a, have the time. But how many people are aware of uh, what I mean when I say edit distances? Okay, good. We've got about uh, 20, 25%. So basically, in a nutshell, what we want to do is determine how many changes it would take to take document one and make it document two. How many operations? Um, if we define a, a bunch of atomic operations, like insert, delete, update, we should be able to have a sequence of these operations to go to, uh, to, to, go to document two. Uh, and then with this sequence, you might get many, there, there might be many solutions. There might be many edit operations to, to get to document number two. In fact, there's an infinite amount of operation, uh, you know, infinite amount of scripts that you could come up with document two. We, we're, not, we're not interested in very long ones. We're interested in, in the minimal, smallest, uh, most elegant uh, number of uh, edits to transform one document into another. As uh, John Snelson reminded me, there are better minimal edit scripts than other, other minimal edit scripts. You know, some, a sequence might numerically be uh, less amount of, uh, of actions, but it, they might run longer. And then once we have, we've made a big table of edit scripts and we've done a heuristic to find the best sequence uh, of edits, um, we just use that to, to, to generate uh, a final document that marks out where the changes have happened. So we, we've talked about pre-process, don't have enough time to go through code, talked about hashes, edit operations. We're just gonna sort of blast to, to the end with, um, with some examples as well as running examples if my computer still works. So here we have a, a situation where um, age and gender and gender and age have been trans, transposed. So when I run this, this utility, I should, I should get no change. So let me see if uh, the demo gods will let me live. Um, can you see that? I can't see it. One moment. Now I can. Right, so uh, if we look here, uh, I think it was D, was it D or was it A? Or was it E? Probably E. Okay, I think it's E. Yeah, all right. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run xdiff e1.xml. Um, and that's telling us it's updating 23 to 22. So let's open up E and see what they look like. So E1 uh, is this document. And E2 is this document with age uh, with a different name. But notice how it's been transposed. 23, and uh, so the, the diff acts like a normal diff where I, I've, I'm, it's, being, it's telling me, um, it's it, you know, updating from 22 to 23. So let me, just for, to prove out the, and I'm not lying, um, that we're going to keep the values of 23, even though the things have been transposed, um, when I run this now I get, nothing, they're both equal, there's no changes. So it's, it's kind of ignoring the transposition. So that solves my problem. Um, let's try a, a, a more interesting, uh, there was actually an original uh, test one, yeah, okay. This was the original one that was included in the, in the very long paper. 
Um, and if we look at test one, we'll see, well, the classic list of books um, and what has changed uh, between this one and this one, I believe, is the current bid time left is now two hours. And also this element, this book element is, is um, reversed. So this solves my problem. Um, I have a tool now uh, written in XQuery that allows me to do normal diffing. Uh, and then uh, I have a tool that does this isomorphic sort of diffing and tells me, you know, where the change is. So if we just do um, uh, sort of the equivalent, and once again, uh, I, I, I was warning George that I love, I love oxygen. Uh, I'm not putting oxygen down. This is just a, I don't, you know, people tell me, maybe this is a tool that someone else has done, you know, and I just haven't found it yet. It might be something that, that I'm missing. Um, uh, but it, it's, it's very handy in, in large scale systems because um, it's a very common thing. So if we look at normal diffing, what it does to this, because the, the, the top element, uh, the top book element is transposed, everything sort of starts getting screwy and I get a much cleaner, cleaner aspect to it. All right. So if we go back here. So we've, we've shown the example where the output, and we could have, you know, you notice it, it, it does the same ordering, gender, age of the first one, gender, age, instead of taking on the order. We could have little flags that, that help us out there. And I did the original, um, the original uh, example that came with the paper. Uh, conclusion. So, just some observations. Uh, most of this problem wasn't about the XQuery coding or, or the XML, like, you know. Most of it was, was mapping, uh, the, you know, the, these problems happen before to people. And, and once you, you find the, uh, the other souls who have walked down the path that you're walking down, um, it becomes a lot easier. So, easier. so once you, you've identified that this is an unordered tree problem, um, it, it can help you um, narrow down the solutions. Uh, I would recommend to read papers. It's a good way to, to, um, to learn stuff. Um, and I think uh, the next steps, what I'll do is obviously I'll be releasing the repo probably today or tomorrow. Um, I want to, I'm interested in the, the aspects of, of making a diff tool schema aware. You know, even with the excess all, that, that, would, that would help uh, a lot in this situation. Now, uh, you know, there's another good example of unordered um, trees. We talked about a JSON. The same exact approach should work with JSON objects. So it might be nice to, um, in Mark Logic, we have native JSON in the server. So it's easy for me to, to reach out. And obviously, we, we work with JSON now. Um, and and, and in, in reality, if we were going to do this in, in, in Mark Logic, um, We'd probably have to rewrite it for, for performance. Uh, but uh, the conclusion is, is that um, uh, for, for the problems I have, now I haven't run this with, with I haven't done any kind of um, large scale analysis, but for the problems I have, uh, the performance that the XDIF algorithm um, uh, gives us is reasonable, but it's hiding the cost a little bit, that hashing cost is something you might not want to do um, on, on ingestion. Um, it's interesting how small decisions like JSON deciding to be a multi-set or an unordered tree, you know, people get big eyes on, oh, this is great, we can update this fast, but it's, you know, there's a, there's a negative uh, uh, as well. So it's, it's very interesting. This is a very subtle, small problem um, that shows up at scale, you know, when you have 50 ways of going into a central database and each way has, you know, you might have, you know, 10 different environments, Python and JavaScript and C, C++, everything touching it can change it ever so slightly. Um, and XQuery obviously is a reasonable language for, for prototyping and doing stuff, so. I think that's about it for me. Um, right, so uh, advice, have, uh, am I missing something? Uh, and any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for a very interesting talk. I had to learn more of XQuery. 
And can you imagine performance when this will be run on Erlang machine? <laughs> so, there's a question. George and then Mike. Okay. George Bina from Oxygen XML. Um, Famous for the XML dance, I believe. <laughs> and for other magic numbers or <laughs> funny things. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, strangely, the problem, in order to solve the problem in unordered things, is to order them. So we have an option in Oxygen uh, uh, to ignore, so, you know, attribute values, attributes can be in different order, right? right? So in order to ignore the order of attributes, you order them, and then you compare. <laughs> so, so yeah. if you order the XML document or, you know, get a, like a canonical form ordering mm. the elements, like in your example, if you have age, gender, and mm -hmm. name all the time, before applying the usual div, then you will get, you know, you will ignore the order. Uh, so sure, you will sure. ignore the order by ordering the data first. Sure, that's, you um, can normalize everything and yeah. you'll be fine. If you have the time, effort, <laughs> energy, billions of documents, yes. Well, it's just a, a pre-processing step before going to the normal div. Yep. Uh, the challenge is, however, how if you do not do that normalization first, how do you present the results in a side-by-side -side view? You know, so that's why we don't do that for elements and we do it only for attributes, mm -hmm. right? And also uh, it's a question of how do you order elements because sometimes the element name is enough, but in your second example, that worked in the first example, but in the second example, we have the same name for the element, so you need to go maybe a bit down into mm -hmm. uh, the children and then use that information when you order, you know, when you compare two nodes, two elements, right? But the solution is to order, to, you know, to handle an order content, it, order it. There's no free lunch. Ordering takes energy. And if you, if you don't control systems, you might not be able to order it, and you have to order here. You can either spend, uh, the bet here is I spend energy on ordering or I spend energy on an on a algorithm that has less energy. Um, and, and, and also if you have a load as is approach, some people might not want things to be messed with. Um, they want a provenance of, of, you know, cleaning data when you're talking about billions of documents becomes an intractable problem. Um, sometimes you just don't have the time to clean data. You have to work with what you have. And an isomorphic utility, something to tell you that two things are the same in a generic way, means I'm never going to have to fix up data this way. You know, it just pushes off one class of fix up. You know. Yeah, I'm just saying that you can take a normal deep algorithm and just mm. plug in this uh, mm. pre-processing step of, on the documents before feeding them to the DIF algorithm sure. and you'll that get what you want. One way to fix it. Okay, thank you. There is another question from Mike Kale. Yes, actually, I was, I was partly going to raise the same point that canonicalization is a, a useful way of viewing this task. I mean, it's conventionally how we handle comparing test results and that kind of thing. Mm. But it needs to be a semantic canonicalization. The, the problem of whether data is ordered or unordered is a, is a semantic issue. Even an XSD schema doesn't tell us whether order is significant mm -hmm, or not. Mm -hmm. um, and what I was looking for really was um, a conclusion that we need some higher level semantic description of isomorphism uh -huh. in order to make this task computable at all. That's an interesting, interesting approach. I, I mean, I haven't gotten to that because I'm not an expert at this. <laughs> I'm walking down a road uh, and just discovering uh, the, the work around it. I think uh, uh, this is a significant, uh, there are customers right now with significant money problems because, because of this problem. You know, they either have to spend time doing one thing or the other thing. And if we can give them options for doing something that's less time, then you know, maybe there, there, there'd be a worth for discussing about formalizing, you know, the definition of this. I mean, I think in, in deep equals in xQuery, there is some slight schema awareness. I can't quite remember if it's, if it's complex versus, is it, I, yeah, it's very minimal. Um, uh, 
I don't know, I don't know anywhere else, but yeah, the, the, maybe we should have a discussion. Uh, there's, I don't know if there's any more W3C groups for this kind of discussion, but you know, that there's, we. W3C and XML, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> we can. So I think it's time for coffee, so thank you, Jim, again. Thank you. And now we have 30 minutes for enjoying coffee, so it's the same setup as in the morning. So coffee is upstairs.